There is a lot to film set design, but one part that is super important is the stuff that fills it. We're going to explain how to think about your backgrounds, what the hell is GAC, and tips and tricks on how to dress your sets and backgrounds so they work for your shop. And stick around as we have a special message and offer from our sponsor, Pond5. All right, so Frank, what are your ideas for our next Pull My Focus video? That's a good question, bro. My mind's blank. That's not all that's blank. On my bank account. Yeah, bro, I'm sorry. I, I, I'm gonna pay you that money. No, your background. My background? It's empty. It's jarring, actually. Hey, Courtney, what do you think? Is Frank's background gonna be a problem? Yeah. I'm looking at the edit right now, and it's gonna be an issue. But it's an easy fix. He just needs some gack. 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 Destroyed my life, ain't it? Got no money. Got no ideas. Now you ain't got no gack. What's the point, man? What's the point? Let me reach into my appropriately staged background and get you a Kleenex to wipe those tears. Thanks a lot, pal. Maybe this will help. That's just full of- Yeah, it's full of balled up paper. I hate you. Your tears have made it so uncomfortably humid in here. Okay, okay. I'll get some friggin' gack. Gack! Gack. 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 Welcome to Pull My Focus, the venture of the world of digital filmmaking, where we give the inside tips you need to make great video. Backgrounds are like audio and film and video. You only notice them when they're off. They're not meant to bring attention to themselves, but hang out in the background to set the mood, ambience, and location. So getting them right is pretty important, and that's where GAC comes in. GAC is a film term used to describe nondescript dressing equipment and props. Loosely means stuff. We're basically busying up the set and background in a manner that fits the location and shot. Another way to describe it is what it's not, a hero prop. If the script calls for a character to show a prop like a letter on camera, well, that's what we call a hero. It has to look good, possibly be uh, readable because attention is being drawn to it. But GAC, that's in the background and is meant to fade into it. This letter as GAC could be anything because it's in the background. It's, you're not able to read it. So where do we start figuring out how to fill in that empty set and background? Research. Sets are made up of surfaces horizontal tables, desks, floors, and vertical walls, doors, chalkboards, whiteboards, corkboards. And they all need GAC to add a certain amount of fullness to them to fit the shot, to be cluttered up to varying degrees, because that's what these spaces look like in the real world. But what's the right kind of GAC? Well, that's where design choices and research come in. A business office is gonna have different GAC than a police department office or even a, a newhip.com. So outside of specific guidance from the set designer uh, and the director, you may need to do some research. That research could be as simple as a Google search or more complicated like a phone call or even a visit to a real world location. Let's look at a common set and its GAC that we see in film and videos all the time, an office. They may need binders, folders, staplers, lamps, calendars, notices on the wall, stickies, stuff on the whiteboard. And some may be specific to the location. Notice the NYPD blue police department calendar on the set of Law & Order. What about the time period? Wolf of Wall Street is set in 1987, so there are no LCD monitors, but there are a lot of manila folders and racks to put them in, lots of them. You can start to see that getting the GAC right 
can take a lot of work and thought. Uh, otherwise, it may draw attention to itself in the wrong way or uh, just not feel right. And the amount of GAC you need may be a lot more than you think. By the way, after watching this video, you're going to start to notice the GAC in all the shows and movies you watch from now on. Really sorry, but hey, you know what? It's for the best. Here's a tip. Look at your space and notice the stuff that you've forgotten that's there because it's blended into the background over time. What kind of stuff like that will you want to add to your set? If the set is for a specific character, it may want to reflect their personality and that might require a discussion with the set designer and director. If you're wearing both hats, ask yourself what is the feeling you want to give that fits this character? Are they neat or cluttered? Boring or lively? What are their interests that may be reflected in their environment? It's crazy, but all that gap that's blending into the background still needs to be detailed. We need to put stuff on and in stuff. Fill out a calendar, label binders and manila folders, put pictures in picture frames, stickies on paper material, paper in manila folders and binders. And some of that gag is going to have text. So what text do you add if it's unreadable? There's two types of text in GAC. Readable, like titles on a whiteboard or on a calendar, and unreadable, like the little notes in the calendar or on a sticky or in a letter in the background. This copy needs to read as text, even though it's unreadable in the shot. Many set dressers have fun and get creative when adding this text. But what if it's a lot of text or needs to be laid out like in this letter? Well, graphic designers and layout artists uh, use dummy text that they Greek in for body text. You can find it online. It's called Lorem Ipsum. And note, it's not Greek. It's actually Latin and has been around since the 1500s. Other body text filler you may run into might be the text on a menu in a restaurant or a printed out notice on the wall. But what about potentially readable text? Uh, well, that's where some research comes in. The text on a whiteboard in a business office might be accounting terms or other business terms, maybe referring to a meeting they had a, a, a few days ago or a week or something. But it doesn't need to be examined. It just needs to read as accurate and viable for what would be in that office. While a whiteboard in a police detective's office may have completely different copy, right? Readable copy on a whiteboard. Note that for potentially readable text, you want to make sure you've thought it out and just assume it's going to be readable. You know, not the small notes, but the bigger stuff. Here's a shot at an F5-6 and the board's pretty much unreadable for the most part. But one stop difference. Shot in an F8, all of a sudden, boom, very readable. We are a big fan of Pond5. They're our go-to place for stock images and video for our client work as well as our channel. So when they reached out to us to sponsor an episode of Pull My Focus, we were an enthusiastic yes. They not only have high quality content uh, to fit any project, but also world-class search. I cannot tell you how useful that has been in our line of business. Pond5's mission is to create world-class storytellers, so we're excited to offer you 20% off your first purchase on Pond5 with the link in the description below. They have also launched their Refer and Earn program, which we are a part of, and catch this, anyone can join and start referring today. Buyers you refer will receive 20% off their first order and you'll earn 20% of that first purchase. Plus, you'll earn 5% of any purchases that user makes for a whole year. Check out the royalty-free, high-quality content now. You'll be happy, your clients will be happy, we're happy, everybody's happy. Everybody's happy. For the images and copy you use in your GAC, you want to make sure you have the rights clear. It's usually best to just create your own like we did with these images of our actors James and Courtney to make them look like a couple. If you want to use copyrighted material, then you need to 
uh, search and find the original creator and get their permission to use it. It's called clearing the rights. If not, stock images are your friend. Look for commercial royalty-free images. Here's a still from the 1999 movie Bowfinger uh, with Steve Martin. He's playing a movie producer. That piece of gack right there on that corkboard is a cartoon from the magazine I produced back in the 90s called Film Crew. The production company reached out to me and asked my permission to use it, which I gladly gave because who doesn't want to be gack in a Steve Martin movie? A lot of GAC is about filling in a space in a believable way to the viewer. And one way to do that is stacking items. I need a stack of printed letters. I don't need to print them all. I just print one and put it on an empty stack, a ream of paper, and boom, I have a stack of printed letters. You could do the same thing if you need stacks of money. Go to your local print shop or copy center and they have these big paper cutters that can cut uh, reams of paper to the dimensions of money, put a crisp 20 or $100 bill on top of each stack, and now you have stacks of money. If you need to print out an image that's meant to look like a photo, use matte or semi-gloss photo paper. The colors will really pop uh, and it'll look and feel like a photographic print versus plain printer paper. Research the time period so you don't add any GAC that doesn't fit that time. And note that it's actually a little tougher on more recent history because most of the viewers, to varying degrees, will be familiar with it. They may know that that thing you marked on the wall didn't happen in February, it actually happened in August of that year. So that's the wonderful world of GAC. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to check out our other videos uh, with tips, tricks, and lessons on how to make great video.